Hello everyone, I'm Giuseppe Cagazza from Silence and Other Sounds. In this video, I would like to go in details about the 12 instruments that are featured in our latest library, Helen. Helen is a contact library about ghostly voices and horror creator sounds. It's a collaboration with vocalist Alessandra Cognetta from Rome, insanely talented singer who had previously contributed to our uh, Ritual Voices and uh, World Chants library, Omen. You might know about that library. And uh, so we experimented a lot with the uh, sonic possibilities of the human voice to come up with something creepy and eerie that fits very well the horror and thriller genre. Although some people that has used that have used it uh, find how finds Alan interesting also for uh, uh, for other genres. Well, of course that's up to you. Just a few more information before starting and going deeper in all of the twelve instruments featured in the library. Uh, Helen requires the full version of Contact 6.6.1. The free Contact player is not supported. However, I'm aware that there are many composers who completely skip the Contact instrument at all and they're just interested about the, uh, the sounds, the WAV files. And like in all our libraries, Helen, uh, in Helen the samples folder is open and accessible. So if you want to just take the WAV files, uh, just maybe drag and drop them on the audio track of your DAW or maybe import them in another sampler, you can do that with Helen or with any of our libraries, uh, regardless of the contact version that you have, because in that case it's not relevant. However, if you want to use the instruments that I'm going to demonstrate now, you need the full version of contact 6.6.1 or above. Uh, last thing before starting, uh, well, Helen has been released just one week ago, so it's still an intro price of $49 instead of uh, $79, plus there are some other discounts on most of our catalog, basically everything except of the mystery box series. Uh, so for uh, except of that, you can save 32% on the, on the rest of all our libraries that we have released so far. Uh, and this will be until August 4, 2023. <laughs> I have to specify the year because some people count one year later. So it, uh, the deadline for this deal for the enterprise of Helen plus the other discounts is August 4, 2023. But I might extend it because there is, all, there is always some people who misses the deal. So I like to keep things flexible. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. So keep an eye on the mailing list and on our Instagram and Facebook profile. So let's start with the first instrument that you find in Helen that is called vocal textures. That, as the name suggests, is based on this. Um, long vocal layers, and some of them are more um, quote-unquote human. I mean, Record Table has human, for example, uh, soprano notes, operatic kind of vocal layers, and other ones are sort of vocalesque and are the result of a very meticulous and deep sound design process. And sometimes I have started from sources that have nothing to do with voices, but have some interesting sort of vowel frequencies, so to speak. And I have processed them to, you know, recreate this kind of eerie, uh, unearthly kind of vocal sound, okay? So you can find, you can find a mix of both, the more realistic vocal sounds and the more designed one. And you can combine them to many interesting ways, like I will show you uh, right now. So uh, the vocal textures comes with the 56 snapshots, so I will just play the first one. And uh, uh, let me assign this vocal morph knob here to my uh, MIDI controller. So this vertical slider on the uh, Rolly Seaboard. So. So as you can see, the vocal morph uh, instrument is based on these two sources, these two layer, L1 and L2, on the left and on the right side. And uh, some sources here are identical for these two menus, so you can select the sounds either by going straight to the menu, or you can use these navigation arrows here, back and forth. Uh, this can be particularly convenient if you like a sound that, and you know, you want to experiment what happens if you replace the current sound with, you know, the surrounding ones, and then if you want to get back, you can, you know, uh, it's more convenient to use the arrow rather than remembering which position of the entry in the menu. Uh, it's a very straightforward thing, uh, and as you can see, you know, there is this big knob here that is called vocal morph. Let's say that all of these layers have been 
thought, uh, let's say, in order to be used with something like that, with the mock-up vocal morph, which is basically a seamless volume crossfade between these two uh, layers, because I'm particularly interested when I create this sort of atmospheric sound in not having, you know, a static sound, like, right? I like something that continuously evolves. And by using the vocal morph, you blend, you know, these two layers, you crossfade from, uh, from layer one to, and layer two and vice versa. And it's very easy, you know, to, and quick and straightforward to create these ever-evolving kind of atmospheres, which is something that personally I really, really like, also in other, you know, uh, instruments de developed by, by other people. Uh, and so you can use this in so many ways. You can use it, you know, to do something like I just did, you know, to uh, continuously morph within one layer and the other one, or you can just, you know, have, you can turn it either, you know, to zero or to the maximum value to isolate one or the other layer. If you have it, you know, uh, completely on zero, you will only hear the first layer, the L1 layer, and if you move it, you know, on the other end, you will just hear the other, the other two layers, so you can also use it as a, a, a mute function, so to speak, on one of the two layers. This is the reason why there is not a mute button, uh, because that's something that you can quickly do with the, vo with, a, with the vocal mode. Or you can just, you know, nail a particularly interesting blend corresponding to a given value of the vocal mode and just keep it static and just play. There is some people, I've seen some video reviews of people that just likes to keep the vocal morph to a fixed value and just, you know, play melodies or chords or drones or whatever. So let's have a quick look to these other controls. Uh, well, we have a, um, some uh, volume envelope knobs, attack, hold, decay, sustain and release on both sides. Obviously, this, all of these controls, layer one, and all of these controls, layer two. And then we have some uh, filter controls here. We have these switches that actually switch the filter from low pass to band pass or high pass um, and the cutoff uh, of the filter. Then we have the resonance of the filter and the LFO controls. The LFO rate that is always assigned to the cutoff um, is always tempo synced, so you can go from 4 to 32. And then we have the LFO amount, so if you don't want to hear the LFO, like in this case, you keep the knob completely to zero, but if you uh, increase it, well, let's just hear the first layer. You know, the more you increase the value, the more you, you, you hear the, the, the rhythmic effect of the LFO. And you can also change the, the, the shape of the LFO. Here we have sine, but you can also select a triangle, south hood or re rectangle. And same thing is also on this other side as well. Uh, and then we have a master effect section, so the reverb here. Well, actually, this is not a proper reverb, so to speak, because I have used the replica delay effect in contact in diffusion mode. And to my ears, that algorithm, the diffusion mode in replica, sounds a little bit more like a reverb rather than a delay. And that cre this creates this very beautiful shimmering effect that, in my opinion, really shines on vocals. So I just decided to call it reverb rather than make things complicated for example, delay, and people listen to something that is not, you know, exactly something like uh, a familiar delay, so to speak. But let's see the controls. Here we have um, uh, an on-off switch, time, high-pass filter and low-pass filter, feedback, because it's a delay. F feedback is not the kind of control that you find normally on reverbs, but once again, this is technically um, a delay. Um, and then we have the, the, um, the wet amount. So you, can go from, from zero basically so you can hear no effect to the to the maximum value so let's just have a listen to some other random snapshots that we can find here once again it's 56 snapshots so let's listen to this one <laughs> those very designed vocal layers that I mentioned before. Uh, some of them recall also, you know, some animal-esque sound, for example, whales. Actually, there is some snapshot that I actually call, yeah, whale clusters, like this one. Yeah. There is another one that I really, really like. 
Actually, there are many that I really, really like, but this one, Inferum Redis, uh, well, this morphs between a, you know, a more, uh, let's say, conventional vocal sound uh, based on the phrase and these design uh, layers. I really like the fact that this Inferum Regis is basically a phrase that has been sung on different notes and when it blends with the other one, you know, it becomes sort of, uh, um, you know, difficult to understand and I really like this sort of uh, elusive effect. It works really well in horror because, in my opinion, horror is all about creating uncertainty because if you think about it, if you think about the concept of fear, you know, what do we fear? We, either we fear something that we know that is going to happen or something that we don't know if it's going to happen. So I've tried to recreate this sort of uncertainty in sound and the vocal morphs allow you to do that, to, you know, blur a little bit uh, the, the sonic peculiarity of both the sounds when you crossfade between, um, between both. Let's listen to something else. Uh, oh, all right, the whispers. Actually, that's not. I will just play these ones because uh, I would like to demonstrate, you know, the, the functionalities um, in the in the library. If you are interested, you have a more clear idea about all the sounds, or at least a good part of the sounds. There is another video on our channel that is the uh, sounds and instrument walkthrough. There is no talking except of me, you know, doing a small introduction, and the rest is all sounds. So if you're just interested to listen to the sounds, you can go to that other video. Okay, uh, just another one, <laughs> because I really like this. Yeah, you can hear this kind of sound, right? And this actually comes from, the source sound was me using a friction mallet against a, um, how, how do they call it in English? It's a polystyrol, you know, it was a box of polystyrol or some stuff that arrived here at the studio. And uh, it resonates really well when you use it with a friction mallet. Let me see if I have my friction mallet handy at the moment so I can show you. No, I don't have it. So it, it, it's a very easy thing. It's basically this super bowl, you know, the one that kids use. And you can just stick, you know, a, 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 a tiny metal stick and uh, you can use it, you know, as a friction mallet. There is some videos on our Instagram, so if you're interested about that. Uh, and by manipulating this sound, it creates this sort of vowelish kind of thing. Uh, so let's move to the next instrument. Well, instruments two to eight are one-shot sound effects, so something like this. <laughs> So if you are familiar with some of our libraries, for example, uh, Malaventum and Omen, uh, you will recognize something uh, familiar here because we always, in most of our libraries, uh, there, is, there are these one-shot sound, sound effects modules where you can control a number of parameters individually on every single sound. So that means that if I play this one, for example, and I change, let's say, pitch, I'm just changing it for this sound, because if I move to the next one, just look at the pitch knob, it's not affected. But if I go back to the previous one, it keeps memory of the setting. And you can do this for all the parameters, basically. Pitch, volume, volume attack and release, low pass, high pass, resonance, uh, LFO controls. This is which here basically assigns the LFO either to the high pass filter or to the low pass filter. So all of these parameters that you see here, with the exception of the master convolution, also the, the, the sample offset and the straight slash reverse direction of the sample can be set individually. So let's have a little bit of fun with, with the reverse. 
let's increase a little bit. Here you have a convolutional reverb, so you can select different uh, impulse responses. So let's just take this one, for example, extreme. Let's see what happens when we play this in reverse with a little bit of pitch shifting. Yeah, you have something like uh, a vocal riser or something like that. But you see, everything that I've done here, if I move to another sample, this sample is not affected. And if I go back, it keeps memory of all the changes that I've made. Okay, this is very interesting. Uh, however, if you, for some reason, need to apply all the same parameters, okay, of pitch, for example, to all the samples, you can use this global control window, where basically if you select any of these voices, it means that that voice is applied to all the samples. So let's say, for example, pitch, okay, I activate it, I will change the pitch to minus 15 semitons, and now all the samples are pitch shifted at minus 15 semitons. And you can do also the same thing, for example, with other available parameters. Let's say low pass filter. If I decrease the cutoff, that's applied automatically to all to all the samples. And this one sounds pretty ominous to my ears. Yeah. And if, if you want to restore the default values, just control slash control slash command click, and it returns to the uh, to default values. So the available global controls are volume. At volume attack and release, reverse, low pass, high pass filter, resonance pitch, LFO rate, LFO amount, shape, and uh, LFO selection either to the high pass or to the low pass filter. So basically all the controls that you see uh, that you see here. Uh, and as I said, there is actually a number of uh, instruments two to eight, so seven contact instruments. And seven of these modules are identical in the functionality, are just divided for the category of sound. So if we this one is uh, Screams Demoniac. This one is Howling's uh, Laments and Laughs. Yeah. So let's see some other ones. and broken sentences. Speeches and shrieks. Shrieks. Is this the right pronunciation? Okay, well, yeah. I really like this one. This is gasp and yes. feature that I forgot to say is that, you know, you have, as you have probably noticed, uh, each sample mapped on a different key within this range that is highlighted in blue. So one key, one different sample. However, if for, for example, you have this one, okay, this is highlighted, the current sample is highlighted in red, okay, the key is highlighted in red. So we have this one, and we want to play it chromatically along this range, we click on the extend button. I can play it like it was a melody, quote unquote. Well, here you can have fun, for example, you can find some interesting sample that has, uh, for example, uh, an interesting tonal 
uh, region, okay, when it stays on a you know a more uh, you know stable pitch, and you can offset the sample to the to that region and play it chromatically like it was something similar to the to the vocal uh, to the vocal textures. Okay, this can sound you know pretty interesting if you want to experiment you know with with this sort of weird synthetic vocal sounds you know creating something like that. Okay, I'll go very, very quick on this one because I, once again, I want to show you the functionalities rather than, you know, uh, deep dive into the actual sounds. This is a very nice one and one of the most, actually so far, appreciated features in Helen. If you have Home Omen, once again, our Ritual Voices and War Chants library, you might spot something similar. Uh, this is basically a syllable sequencer. There are actually two in Helen, and there were two also in Oman, but in Oman were based more actually on this sort of uh, sorcery, big Viking, ancient kind of sound. Here a little bit more, you know, eerie and uh, well suited for horror. And the difference is that in both, they are based on this sort of fictional language because you have these short syllables and uh, the engine, you know, stitches them together, sequence them uh, one after the other in order to create this sort of rhythmic phrases. And in Omen, it was based on this fictional language that we came up with that resembled Old Norse. In this case, we have used, well, Alessandra has used this language that, uh, you know, borrows a little bit from ancient Latin. Some words are actually ancient Latin, for example, spiritus or uh, diabolus, maybe. Uh, but other one, you know, they just seem and simulating, but they don't mean anything, you know, in the original language. By the way, you have these 16 steps, okay? And for each one, you can select a single or a double voice. You can select the timing, 1-8 or 1-4, the volume and the spread. The spread means the stereo spread. So when you have two voices, you can decide how much you want them hard pan and, you know, on the, in the stereo, in the stereo field. And if you just press this green key here, which is B3, I think, or B2. Okay, all of these um, words, or uh, even single syllables, there, is, there are actually groups of one, two, and three sy syllables are played you know, according to their position in the step sequencer. Um, and this is a very interesting instrument because you can experiment a lot, you know, in creating your own phrase, right? And uh, uh, a control that I added, there is not in Omen, but you can find it here, is this format one, because all of these syllables are tempo sequenced. But by using this formal control, you can actually alter, uh, alter the, the, the gender of the voice. So let's listen. <laughs> So, you know, by moving this format knob, you can, at this value, you know, it sounds like, you know, a low pitch monster kind of thing. And as you go up with the value, it tends to sound a little bit more like a sort of a ghost evil key to something like that. Okay, and I really like to, 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 to continuously change, you know, the value. In the phrase, because the, the sort of gender altering things that happen, you know, easily create this sort of eerie, you know, uh, unexplicable, so to speak, kind of effect that works really well on voices, especially in horror. Uh, well, if you just, you know, play the, 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 the this blue piece here, is actually uh, the, 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 uh, all the syllables that are featured and are selectable from these menus here. Uh, other controls, well, you have length and loop. Loop, you know, is activated. It means that once that it gets to the end of the loop, which is, in this case, you know, it's the maximum value, it's all the 16 steps, it starts back from, from, from the beginning. Uh, and with length, you can actually select how long you want the loop, you know, so how many steps you want, you, you want to play. For example, you might just want a half. Or you can also do, you know, odd time signatures, for example. 
Spiritus. Let's, let's raise a little bit the BPM. Spiritus diabolus immunus ter crea omne malus. Spiritus diabolus immunus. Yeah, and there is also this randomized button here that sets random value for all of the steps. So let's give it a try. As a master effect, we have a delay, once again it's the replica delay, where you can either use diffusion that, as I said before, for the vocal texture, it sounds a little bit like, well, definitely sounds like a reverb, or you can use something more conventional, for example, a tape delay. So let's give it a try. Well, let's set the loop to the, to the maximum value. So, you know, what I've tried to do here is to give just a few controls that impact the eeriness, you know, of this rhythmic phrase that you, that you create in a very straightforward way. And that's something that I hear a lot, especially in trailers uh, for horror movies. There is always this, you know, particular usage of the voice uh, that does this kind of stuff. So I had more or less that in mind when I created this instrument. As I say, this is just the first one of the phrase builders in Helen. There is also another one, instrument, instrument number 10, that is, a, I call it breath sequencer, because rather than words, it's based on this, it's based on this short breathing sound. So let's give it a listen. Yeah. Let's randomize everything and see what happens. Yeah, this one is particularly usable if you want to create this sort of unconventional rhythmic thing. Maybe you can pair it with some interesting percussions and really you have a rhythmic band that goes, you know, in some direction. You know, in regard to the functionalities, this is absolutely identical to the first one. The only thing that changes is actually the kind of sounds that you can select from the menus. As I say, these are short rhythmic uh, uh, sounds like <sighs> stuff like that. And in the previous one, you find something that you know, to create an actual phrase in this fictional language that occasionally borrows from, from real until blading. So let's go to instrument 11, and this one is my favorite. As a sound designer, I wanted to give you something that allow you to create, to, you know, easily make a creator's design with just one instrument without, you know, getting lost in the door with stacks of 10 different sounds picked from different libraries. So I tried to do something more compact here. And this one is the Vocalize Builder. Well, someone told me, well, vocalize maybe is not exactly the right word for something that sounds like this. But call it animal noise builder, you know, it didn't sound a little bit off to me. So vocalize builder, you know, sounds cool. It's basically an instrument that allows you to create this sort of animal-esque kind of sounds by stacking these three layers of sounds. You see L1, L2 and L3 that can be either, you know, muted or activated. And for each one of these layers, you have independent controls. You can, well, change the pitch, of course. You can select from a, I can't remember actually how many sounds are here, but you can, you know, you can see it's quite a bunch of them. And these are kind of drier sounds in comparison to the ones that you're seeing in the SFX modules. Because in order to create your own sounds, you have to start from something that is no over-designed, you know, like the previous one that need to be over-designed in order to, you know, give it, sure shot kind of vocal horror vocal sounds here you know the sound design game is passed to you at least this is the the intention of the instrument so the the the, the building sounds so to speak are drier in comparison to the to the previous one so as i say you can also browse the sounds by category they are divided by three categories low mid and high according to uh, the frequency range where the sound sits. Now, now we happen to have one low sound and two mid sounds. I'll play it again. Yeah, you can, for example, go to high, high exhale, let's do yeah. 
Interesting. So the, the, the intention of the instrument is even if you go just completely random in selecting, you know, the, the, these three stacks of sounds, you always come up with something that is interesting and usable in that context. And talking about randomization, you have actually different option to randomize the sounds here. This R button basically randomizes the sounds uh, according to the layer where it's located. For example, here you only randomize the sound for layer one here for layer two and here for layer three. So if you need to, to randomize just one or maybe two of the sounds uh, of the layers. <laughs> or you can use this random own function that basically, well, just one second, before, before talking about these two, just let me add one thing that I forgot. You can see this small, stretch button here. Well, when you activate it, the, the corresponding layer is not played, let's say, um, uh, in, well, the actual technical word in contact is in DFD mode, which means that the sample is played at, it, at its normal speed and it changes its speed according to the pitch. Uh, when you activate the time stretch, you activate the time stretch algorithm where the amount of time stretch and the pitch are detached from each other. So you have a non-linear kind of pitch shifting. And this can be very useful to design your own sounds because you can, you know, dramatically lower the time stretch and maybe raise the pitch. Nothing stops you from doing that. And you can also have control on the, on the format, which is something similar that we have seen in the phrase builder. So let me just play this one alone and let's see what happens. So there is a further, you know, possibility of sound design and creating your own sounds by creating by, by using the time stretch. And you know, if you are into sound design, that time stretch creates this sort of sort of artifacts. You know, playing samples slower than their actual speed basically creates a completely different sound. So let's give it a try on something else. Yeah, let's have this main scream here. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Okay, now I can talk about the, the other two randomization options. This one is called random all. If I click it, it randomizes everything. It randomizes the selection of the sound, the value of the pitch, the, the value of the stretch button, turn it off or on, and all the controls that you see here, um, with the only exception of volume and the volume envelope, are randomized. This can be useful when you you know, just want to start completely random and then fine-tuning the sound, especially for the sample offset. So let's see what, let's maybe increase a little bit the attack for all three layers. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can uh, start from this and then fine-tune it until you find something that, that you like. So let's deactivate the stretch. Let's decrease the pitch a little bit for all of them. And let's see what happens with this cycle random. Well, when cycle random is activated, every time that you press the green button, which by the way is the one that triggers all the three layers on top of each other at once, uh, every time that you press the button, these sources here are randomized. The other control remi remains identical. The only thing that changes is these three sources. So it's like pressing all of these three buttons random at once, every time that you trigger the, uh, the sample. So let's give it a try. <laughs> here to design your own sound. So if you are into that, if you are that kind of composer who likes to create 
his or her own sounds, you know, you, I think that you can find a lot of fun in the Vocalize Builder. Oh, here you have a master effects, the convolution effects is pretty much the same one that you find in the SFX module, so I won't spend words about this one. Uh, last but not least, we have the breathe loops. So the interface, as you see, is similar, sort of similar to the SFX module, but it's slightly different because, well, it's basically tempo sync breathing loops. So let's just have a listen. <laughs> It's somewhat similar, you know, to the breathing sequencer, but, you know, I think that sometimes recording the whole loop according to the kind of sounds gives you another option. It adds a little bit more realism, so you can, I think you can combine them very well together. You have a four-man control per sample. This is something that, something that you do not have in the SFX module, uh, in the sound effects module, and you have this half tempo button, so let's see what it does. Here, so half tempo is activated. This means that if the master tempo is 120, the sample is played at 6 BPM. That's something that can be useful, you know, when you want to halve the, 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 the speed of your sample. If I, if I deactivate it, something like this. And if I turn it on, half of the speed. For the global controls, it's basically the same concept as for the sound effects module, where you want to make any of these parameters uh, accepted with the, uh, acceptable format uh, global for all the samples. You just click it, and so if you uh, move that parameter, it affects all the samples. So, guys, I'll try to squeeze as fast and as effectively as I can all the relevant functionalities of the instruments in Helen. It's hopefully a toolkit for anyone that compose this kind of music to create in a very efficient and quick way this sort of uh, vocal horror sounds that work so well in this genre. So once again it's an intro price of $49 instead of $79 until August 4th plus possible extensions of the deal. 32% discounts on other library except of the Mystery Box series and uh, hope that you enjoy the video and you are enjoying the library. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.